Uh, so yeah, I'm with TPAC Underwriters. We're in Minneapolis. Uh, Jake, we are a, uh, a stop loss reinsurer, which uh, um, I we have never been Jake stop loss reinsurer. So I, um, you know, I'd love to have a conversation. Matt talked about trusted partners, and that's certainly uh, what we have tried to be in in the 32 years that we've uh, been in business. So what I'm what I'm going to talk about uh, TPAC, um, you know, we we've underwrite group medical plans, and, uh, and we find a lot of um, brokers, TPAs, who uh, these are the, the programs that we're going to put in place to save, to save cost. Uh, and sometimes those happen effectively, and sometimes those don't happen effectively, and sub sometimes the um, incentives are so misaligned that um, maybe we could put something in to save an employer money, but it actually disincentivizes the TPA or the broker to do that because they get competent compensated by somebody else because there's money flying all over the place on top of the table and underneath the table. Um, so I just, I want to share a personal story, uh, which is kind of a microcosm of, uh, I think, what's wrong with the industry and what gives me passion uh, to do what I do. Uh, so I want to talk about the best-selling drug of all time. And I, I have a love-hate relationship with this drug. I've been on this drug for 17 years. And uh, when I was a father with young children, and I uh, couldn't pick them up because I had such pain in my sacrum and was having my wife uh, take my shoes off so I could um, get into the shower after I got home from work and do I need help getting out of bed. Uh, and I started using this drug 17 years ago and in three days was getting out of bed without any pain. Um, it was God's grace and a needle to me. Um, but I, I've said for years that the one thing I wish I, wish I would have done differently uh, I wish I would have spent as much money investing in Abbott stock as I did, um, as was being spent um, to procure this medication. So I, I found a, a great website uh, called Stockulator. So you can actually go back to um, from inception, um, from an IPO, uh, where was the stock price then and where is the stock price today? And, and I just kind of ran some numbers. And I, I didn't procure my medication through the, the means allocated to me. I found some alternate ways because uh, I'm frugal, I'm cheap, and it irritated me that uh, it doesn't need to cost this much and how can we figure out how it should cost less? Um, but Stockulator, uh, in 2007, when I started taking uh, Humira, it was $1,000 a script. And uh, today it's about seven grand a script. Interestingly, Abbott stock was $24 a share. In 2013, they spun off another company, AbbVie. Uh, it's trading, when I looked just a couple of days ago, it was $197 a share. Uh, so if I had just gotten my med for 17 years, I would have put in about 900, or there would have been about $900,000 in medication cost. Um, if I had put that in Abbott stock, uh, I'd be sitting on about three and a half million dollars today. So um, they're providing a service, but who are they most inclined to serve? I, I, that's, there's a question there. Uh, so these are some of the things that I did over the years. Uh, I tried a, uh, a prescription assistance program. I sent years of tax returns and um, budgets and bank statements. And in our plan doc, I, I wrote out um, excluded uh, coverage of specialty meds um, to try to get assistance from Abbott to get this drug for free. Um, and they said, yeah, you, you make too much money, it, which would have been about 75% of my salary if I had been buying it out of pocket because I excluded it from our plan. Uh, that option didn't work. Uh, so then I hopped in a plane and I started flying to the Caribbean. And I'd come through customs with, with my med in hand. And uh, it saved about 30 or 40%. Um, it was novel for a while. Eventually, it got a little bit tiring going to the Caribbean four times a year. Probably some of you think, well, that if you do it long enough, it's, 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 it, doesn't, it becomes less fun. Uh, so the, lo the long-term solution that I used was I started importing from Canada. And um, it was about 70% less, 60%, 70% less than what I could get it here. Um, and again, there's, you'll read horror stories about supply chain and, and cold chain shipping, and, but there are good entities out there that do this, and it comes overnight FedEx to my door. Um, while all of this was going on, uh, there were other manufacturers who were trying to create biosimilars, you know, kind of the generic equivalent of a biologic medication. Uh, some of these have even been listed now as bioidenticals, that if you get a, pres a Humira prescription, you can actually use it to have a, a drug that is much cheaper filled with the same Humira prescription. 90% cost savings. Uh, it's 
$550 a month instead of $7,000 a month. And this just happened in 2023. But why, why does Humira still have 80% of the market share? It just, it, it's, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, there are three large PBMs in the country, and um, one of them provided this quote in an LA Times article uh, last year, which I just think is uh, just a, a remarkable um, telling. Uh, we are fostering competition while ensuring the broadest possible choice for those we serve. So what Optum said they would do, they took these drugs that were 90% less, they put them in their same formulary with Humira at the same price as Humira. So you could buy it for $550 from Cost Plus Drugs, thank you, Mark Cuban, um, or you could buy it for $7,000 through Optum, just like you could buy uh, Humira. So what's the incentive? Well, who are they serving? Um, is that, that's not free market. It's the absolute opposite of free market. We'll take a $550 drug, put it in our formulary, and charge you $7,000 for that or $7,000 for Humira. I have a friend who actually retired early um, because his father-in-law worked um, at Abbott through this, and, uh, he, and he's very happy. So they were serving someone. <laughs> so uh, the Wheel of Fortune uh, rule of investing in pharmaceutical companies. If you're watching Wheel of Fortune and you watched it 10 years ago, you would see advertisements for Humira. Uh, if you watch it today, you'll see advertisements for Skyrizi and Rinvoke. Uh, I guess who makes Skyrizi and Rinvoke? The, the same entity that made, made Humira. And, and interestingly, they came in um, 21 and 22, um, just, just on the cusp of um, Humira suddenly getting all of this biosimilar, bioidentical competition. Um, so now these are better. They, they treat basically the same list, and I'm not a doctor, I'm sure there is a situation where Skybrizzi or Rinvoke would be, but what they tout, Humira, inconveniently, I have to inject 26 times a year. Um, what if I'm going on vacation and I have to bring medication and an ice pack, and well, Skybrizzi, it's only four times a year. Well, that's way more convenient. I wanna be on Skybrizzi. Um, well, what about Rinvoke? It's just a pill. I don't even have to refrigerate it. It's much easier to take. Um, the only problem is they cost about $120,000 a year um, to be on those. So who are they better for? Uh, so again, we're TPAC. Uh, I met Matt a few years ago uh, at the FMMA. We, uh, a lot of you have come to some events in Wisconsin. I, I'm a Packers stockholder. That's why I got to come up here instead of uh, some of the other guys in our office. Um, so it's, uh, we love what you're doing. We love to support what you're doing, and, and we're committed to uh, helping however we can. Thank you.